Señoritas y señores, bienvenidos a otro video para la clase de español nivel número 1, level 1, Spanish 1. ¿Cómo están? Como pueden ver, like you guys can see, aquí estoy en mi casa. Welcome back to my house. It's been a while since I had you guys come into my crib. And Señor Barbosa is at home and teaching from home, bringing the people más, oops, más uh, español, yeah, more Spanish goodness, even though I'm here and you guys are over there. So uh, thanks as always. Gracias por ver estos videos. You should be watching these videos um, often, regularly, more than once, so you can practice, 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 so you can master the skills that you need to know to be successful in la clase de español. It's late at night, so if I'm talking a little quietly, it's because the babies are asleep, Mrs. Barbosa's asleep, everyone's asleep, and I'm here being a night owl, but I gotta do it. I gotta do it so I can bring you más español knowledge. So let's take a look at where we are in the book, chapter 6a. And uh, once again, at this point in la clase de español, hopefully you have done the research with all of the vocabulary that has to do with what's in your dormitorio, aka your cuarto, aka your recámara, or whatever you might say your room is in Espanol, all of this right over here. Okay, so at this point, you should have been able to make flashcards. Also, uh, colors, colors, señoritas y señores, los colores en Espanol. And then a few uh, audio and visual um, vocabulary words, although I've been pretty vocal about this. If you've had me for La Clase de Espanol, um, it's time for new books because anytime they throw in la video casetera into your vocabulary um yeah that's that's a relic from the past so anyway hopefully you guys get updated libros sometime soon but now it's time for us to turn our attention to the grammar section of chapter 6a we're going to start with pagina 278 page 278 and this is a lesson called Making comparisons. Most definitely, ladies and gentlemen, in Spanish, you will most definitely need to know how to say that something is uh, as good as this or as bad as this or maybe even better or worse or older or younger, um, so on and so on and so on. Okay, so this whole thing that you're about to see is based on what you see on page 278. So let me show you the PowerPoint. And here it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so in the past, you've already learned más, more, and you've already learned menos, less. So, uh, for example, me gusta el tenis, pero me gusta más el fútbol. Yeah, okay, I like tennis, but I like soccer better, or I like it more. ¿Te gustan las manzanas? Do you like the apples? Sí, más o menos, more or less. Okay, so you've seen más and menos in the past. We've also, we also use más and menos plus a describing word, an adjective, plus the word que, which does not mean what here, it means than, to make comparisons. Okay, so either más or menos, more or less, plus whatever adjective you want to use, plus the word que, which in this context means than, okay? Los discos compactos de los toros son más populares que los discos compactos de los lobos. All right. Yes, I do realize that in this day and age, nobody really uses CDs, a.k.a. discos compactos anymore, but just, you know, play along. So, yeah. So, these CDs from los toros are more popular than the CDs from Los Lobos, okay? Más, more. Populares, the plural form of popular, that's your adjective. Que, not meaning what here, it means than, okay? More popular than, okay? So that's a good example of that in action. Jorge es menos serio que María. George is less serious than Maria. Menos, less. Serio, adjective. Que, than, Maria. Okay? Um, 
the adjectives agree with the nouns they refer to. In other words, um, what do you call it? Uh, what do I want to say here? Oh, yeah. Well, this is actually just a fancy way of saying matchy matchy. You still have to always keep in mind in Spanish when you're learning Spanish, number gender rules. Matchy matchy. Is it singular? Is it plural? Is it masculine? Is it feminine? All right. So uh, just be aware of those rules. That's always an ongoing thing. All right. Okay. So what if you want to say, um, what if you have something that is good, bueno, something that is bad, malo, something that is viejo or someone that is viejo, old, and something or someone that is joven or young, and you want to use those comparative or you want to compare things using those adjectives in Spanish. Well, there's a special rule for all of this. Um, they're called irregular comparative forms. So we do not use mas or menos with them. So for example, if you want to say that something is better, don't say mas bueno. If you want to say something is worse, don't say mas malo. If you want to say something is older, don't use mas viejo. If you want to say something is younger, don't say mas joven, okay? No, there's some uh, a separate set of rules for these. And let me show you what they are. Okay, check it out. If something is good, either bueno or buena, depending on the gender, like for example, um, bueno, el burrito, buena, la enchilada, okay, matchy matchy, remember, okay? And if you want to say that it's better, say this, mejor, actually, mejor que, better than, okay? All right? So don't say más bueno or más buena. Say mejor que. All right. Este burrito es mejor que ese burrito. This burrito is better than that burrito. Um, same thing with bad. All right. Malo or mala, depending on the gender that you're describing, uh, the noun that you're describing. Um, don't say más malo or más mala. Say peor que worse than okay um if you want to say something that is or someone that is older don't say mas viejo or mas vieja say mayor que mayor que older than oops and then if you want to say someone is younger joven don't forget joven ends with an n so joven can describe both guys and girls since it ends in a consonant like the letter n okay um, so if you want to say something or someone is younger, don't say más joven. Don't say that. Say menor que, younger than. Menor que, okay? So once again, mejor que, if it's better. Peor que, if it's um, worse. Mayor que, if it's older. Menor que, if it's younger. All right? And, of course, you can say, um, let's see, uh, Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I lost my train of thought. It's late. So let's keep going. Mejor, peor, mayor, and menor. All right. Better, worse, older, and younger. When you want to make these plural, you're going to need to add an ES. Okay. So if you're talking about, you saw my, you heard my example earlier about burritos, right? Este burrito es mejor que ese burrito. Well, what if I have many burritos? Estos burritos son mejores. Mejores. You see that? Don't just slap on an S. Um, slap an ES onto mejor. Mejor S. Okay. And then the same thing with peores to make it plural. Mayores. Menores, matchy matchy. Okay, so if you have plural things, you're gonna have to make these plural for them to uh, be correct Spanish. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, they don't have a different feminine form. In other words, um, you can just keep them gender gender neutral. In other words, uh, these adjectives you don't have to pay attention to if it's um, masculine or feminine. Okay. 
but you do have to pay attention to whether it's singular or plural. Las hermanas de Pedro, Pedro's sisters, son menores que las de Juan. Okay, so Pedro's sisters are younger than Juan's sisters. And once again, here's our comparative word menor, but if you say las hermanas de Pedro son menor, that's incorrect because if this is plural, las hermanas, this needs to be plural. Menor changes to menores. Add the ES. Again, matchy, matchy is what you got to do in Spanish. And then finally, um, if you want to use uh, a comparative for bien and mal, which are adverbs, bien means well and mal means badly, you can use mejor for um, one up of, of uh, bien and peor for one up of uh, mal, if that makes any sense. All right. So, um, Graciela y Fabian juegan tenis mejor que Susana y Gustavo. Okay. So, um, we're talking about uh, abilities, a uh, skill at a, a certain sport here. So, mejor que better than in the sense that they play well, but they play more well, if that makes any sense, to uh, compared to Susana and Gustavo. So once again, sometimes you're going to use bien and sometimes you're going to use mal in Spanish. You can use mejor if it's better than bien and you can use peor if it's better than mal. All right. Um, so that's a look at comparatives, everyone. Once again, page 278 in your book, you can read that part of your book on your own. Okay, so now I've shown you how to say better or worse or older or younger, but what if you want to use the most or the least? If you want to say something is the best or the worst, that's called the superlative, okay? You can't get past the superlative. You got good, then you got better, then you got best. The best meaning the top of the top, the super. You can't get better than best. It's best is the highest you can go. So that's, yeah, called the superlative. And that exists in Spanish too. But there are some specific rules that you're going to have to follow um, to say that something is the most, the least, the best, the worst, and it's, and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is on page 280, página 280 in your book. Um, in English, superlatives are when we use adjectives with an est as a suffix, like the greatest, all right? Um, the fastest, the tallest, and so on and so forth. Um, but in Spanish, it's a bit more intricate, okay? Please memorize this formula, all right? Because this is going to be what you're going to have to write in a Spanish sentence if you want to indicate that something is the most or the least of a group. First, you're going to need your definite article, depending on the number and the gender of the thing you're talking about, either el or la or los or las. Plus the thing being mentioned, the person, place, or thing being mentioned, your noun. Plus mas or menos. Now we already use mas or menos to make comparisons, the last lesson I showed you. But yes, these can double up as most and least. Yes, you could still use mas or menos to talk about the most and the least in Spanish. And then finally, whatever describing word you want to use to describe uh, something that is the best or the worst or the most or the least of a group, okay? So once again, memorize this formula right over here. Either el or la or los or las, your definite article, plus your noun, plus mas or menos, plus whatever you want to say about it, okay? Check it out. La foto de mi familia es la posesión más importante para mí. The photo of my family is the most important possession for me. All right. So, la foto, la foto, it's la pos, I'm sorry, la posesión, it's the, the possession, más, most, and then finally, your adjective, uh, importante, la, la posesión más importante. 
la posesión más importante. So as you could see, I'm using this formula right over here. La posesión más importante to say it's the position that is the most important to me. Okay? Los colores más bonitos, the most prettiest colors. Los colores más bonitos. So once again, using this formula right here, los colores más bonitos. Well, in Spanish, it says the colors most pretty. It doesn't really translate very well directly. But if you want to say the prettiest colors, that's basically what it's trying to say. All right. Okay. What if you want to say something or someone is the best or the worst? This is what you use. This is your formula. El mejor or la mejor, depending on the gender of the noun you're talking about. And if you want to say that something or someone is the worst, el peor or la peor, again, depending on the gender of your noun. Pienso que Gonzalo Ochoa es el mejor estudiante. Pienso, I think, pienso que, I think that Gonzalo Ochoa es el mejor estudiante, the best student. Okay, so once again, el mejor, because Gonzalo's a dude. So he's the best student. Um, you can also say things such as el peor estudiante, the worst student. La mejor niña, the best girl. Notice that it says la mejor uh, because it matches the gender of what you're talking about. Okay. If you want to say the most or the best of a group, then throw in the word de. And that basically is going to more or less translate to out of everything or everyone. Okay. Para mí, Eduardo es el peor estudiante de todos. For me, Eduardo is the worst student out of everybody. Okay. El peor estudiante, the worst student, Eduardo being a dude, masculine, el peor estudiante de todos, out of everyone. Margarita es la mejor estudiante de la clase. Margarita is the best student out of the whole class. Okay, so you can see right here the word de is basically in Spanish saying um, out of this group. Okay, la mejor estudiante, la mejor because Margarita is a girl, feminine, la mejor estudiante de la clase out of the whole class. All right, and then see if you could try to figure out what these phrases say. La prueba más difícil. What do you think? The most difficult quiz. El informe menos interesante. The least interesting um, report. Inform is a report. La más difícil de todas. The most difficult out of all of them. And it's, fem it's feminine because I, I know because it says la más difícil, not el más difícil. And then finally... Los menos interesantes del día. The least interesting out of the whole day. So those are your superlatives. Finally, the last grammar lesson in Chapter 6a is something called Poder and Dormir. This is on page 284. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember working with the verb jugar, and changing it around, a.k.a. conjugating jugar in the present tense. Let's go to this website because it's always a great website to go to. SpanishDict.com for all of your conjugation and translation needs. Okay, so let's review the verb jugar, shall we? So if I play in the present tense, yo juego. You play in the present tense. Tú juegas. And then the rest. Usted, él, ella juega. 
Nosotros jugamos. Ustedes, ellos, ellas juegan. So, remember that this is something called a stem-changing verb, okay? Um, and this is a while back. We learned this a while back, and if you're kind of fuzzy on it, then it's okay for you to go back to my previous videos and uh, re review the verb jugar, where I explain it a bit more in detail. But yeah, um, you're going to approach poder to be able to and dormir to sleep kind of the same way. All right, so let me uh, show you the PowerPoint here. So the verb poder means to be able to or you can. And uh, once again, in Spanish, don't forget that you have your stem and then you have your ending. All right, stem, then ending. You always keep the stem. Well, I shouldn't say always. Sometimes it'll change. But that's in Spanish too. You'll, you'll cross that bridge when you get there. So usually the stem stays the same, but it's the ending that is interchangeable, like moving parts, like Lego blocks. You swap out a couple pieces, put in brand new pieces. Um, so check it out, the verb poder. Pod is your stem. And then the ER in poder, that's the part that changes. Okay. Um, so um, poder, as it turns out, it's treated like jugar to play because the stem is going to change. The stem is what changes. So the stem pod changes from the O in pod. It changes to a UE in most forms. Now I say most forms because the only form it doesn't change is when you get to the nosotros form. All right. So when you get to nosotros, that O stays there and you do not swap it out for a UE, but everywhere else you do. Well, in the Americas anyway. So instead of pod, you have pued, and that's why you say something like puedo ir al baño. You don't say podo ir al baño, that's incorrect. You say puedo. And then uh, if you remember in class, I've told you how ER ending infinitives have a certain set of endings. So you use those in addition to changing the stem in poder. Anyway, um, in English, this is what you would say. I can, you can, he can, she can, it can, we can, or they can. All right, pretty straightforward. And then, of course, in Spanish, here are your endings for ER ending verbs. And now we put the whole thing together. Let's find out how to change poder around or to conjugate the verb poder around in the present tense in Spanish. Here we go. Yo puedo. Tú puedes. Usted or él or ella puede. Nosotros podemos. Okay, notice right here. The stem stays in its original form. Do not change that to a UE in the nosotros form. But then you go back to it with this. Ustedes, ellos, ellas, pueden. All right. So once again, poder in Spanish to be able to. Yo puedo. Tú puedes. Usted, el, ella puede. Nosotros podemos no change in the stem. Ustedes, ellos, ellas pueden. So there's a lot going on here. Notice that the stem changes here, 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 not here, and then again here. And if you want to draw the outline over where it does change, it forms the shape of a shoe or a boot, just like we talked about a while back. And then on top of that, you have ER infinitive endings right here, right here, right here, oh, right here, and right here. Okay, so boy, there's, so there's multi-steps involved when you're conjugating a verb such as poder. So once again, puedo, puedes, puede, podemos, and pueden, all right? Now, if you're going to conjugate the verb poder, the rule in Spanish is that the very next verb, if you use another verb, 
the very next verb is always, always, always going to be an infinitive. So what that means is this changes. Puedo, puedes, puede, podemos, pueden. But then the next verb that you use always ends in A-R-E-R-I-R. -R -R. So change poder, but don't change the verb that follows it. No puedo ir al cine contigo el viernes. I can't go to the movies with you this Friday. But hey, in class, don't you always say puedo ir al baño? Notice that you always say puedo ir al baño. Puedo. That's conjugated. Ir. That's infinitive, okay? It stays infinitive. Don't change it. You don't say puedo voy al baño. That's in correct Spanish. You say puedo ir al baño. All right? So, real quick. Puedo, puedes, puede, podemos, pueden, in the present tense for the verb poder, okay? Now let's talk about the verb dormir. Very similar to poder, same approach, means to sleep. So this time, the O in dormir changes to a UE in most cases, all right? So, look at this. What was originally dorm, the stem of dormir, right here. Now it's going to become duerm in most situations. And then, of course, you pair dormir up with their, with its IR infinitive endings. All right. So, let's uh, take a look. Yo duermo. I sleep. Tu duermes. You sleep. Usted or él or ella duerme. You formal or he or she sleeps. Nosotros dormimos. No stem change in the nosotros form. Leave it alone. But then go back to it for the last conjugation. Ustedes, ellos, ellas duermen. All right, so just like the verb poder and just like the verb jugar, make sure you change that stem here, 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 not here, but then once again, here. And again, if you want to outline where it does change, it takes the shape of a shoe. And of course, dormir is an IR ending infinitive, so make sure that you put IR endings to all of your conjugations for the verb dormir in the present tense. All right, so once again, duermo, duermes, duerme, dormimos. Don't say duermimos, that would be incorrect. And then finally, duermen. And that is poder and dormir. That was from page 284 in your textbook, and that's going to do it for chapter 6a grammar in your espanol uno libro so thanks for staying up with senor barbosa late at night while i'm here at home speaking very softly because everyone's asleep in the house but we still have work to do senoritas y senores the school year is almost over all of this set you're seeing in this video right now will be on the final exam which is fast coming up um in in a matter of weeks now okay and so i really hope that you've been doing what you need to do in la clase de espanol and beyond to keep up so that's going to do it for me thanks very much for visiting me once again in my casa and i will see you in la clase de espanol very very soon okay so take care señoritas y señores and i will see you in la clase de espanol adios